I uh, am uh, a former neo-Nazi white supremacist skinhead. Um, I've been disengaged for almost 25 years. A lot of my life has really revolved around trying to stand the gap so that I don't transmit the generational trauma that was like part of my story and then from my own choices onto uh, my children. I would just point out that uh, this conversation would be virtually impossible to have on social media before a bunch of trolls just went after you. A lot of times when you, when one shares their point of view, the other person hears it as, oh, so you're saying my point of view is wrong just because you have a different point of view. So now we just have to battle. And that's like so, that's like so sad. That we're not just trying to form a consensus or a resolution, that we're just trying to better understand ourselves, to grow in our understanding, and take the time to listen to the experiences of one another. If I can have the opportunity to listen to others so that I can gain more of a universal understanding, then I can uh, essentially, I guess, condition myself to be a, a more inclusive human being. So that's what you lead to a conversation like this. And I love the thought of just gathering to discuss things that are hard to talk about and things that I think have been just swept under the rug and um, and kind of called um, progress. But it, I, I don't think that, I don't know, sometimes I think we haven't made as much progress as we think we have. The type of conversation that we've had here has been longer and gone a little deeper than some others, but these are conversations that I see people having. And sooner or later, it's gonna reset the paradigm again in terms of the character of like, our culture and our country, I think. So. I'm hoping for it. The denial of the presence of people in any capacity is a denial of our own reality because we, like uh, Shanna said before, we're interdependent. So it's like, if I try to imagine a world where everybody is just like me, it's just a waste of energy because it's not reality anyway. So why not just get to know people as they are? And like, in, as we engage in each other's stories, we become different people. Um, but I, but I look, I look at the rise of, of, of identity politics, and, and the most noxious to me as a white person is, is white nationalism. But I, I would just be afraid of, of political demagogues um, that would exploit that to divide us. And that's why, that's why I want to. I want always, as as a libertarian, I always want to get to that that commonality. I, I just want to make sure that that. In America, we don't fall into that trap, and obviously, we're seeing some of that today. And that—that's what—that's what worries me. I don't think uh, race should be a concept that we accept in this country or just in in the world. I'm still surprised when I encounter someone who has that same kind of attitude and just assumes because I'm a white person that I hold that same attitude and that just that kind of infuriates me. I, I, I'm used to being criticized by like you know my black liberal friends and so forth for keeping company with conservatives and then around conservatives I'm used to being criticized for giving so much credence uh, to uh, left-wing social perspectives on, on various things you know and um, that's why I say I just I enjoy these sorts of conversations with people like yourselves and I really think that there is sort of a swelling swelling of this type of you know uh, consciousness I guess in this country right now I feel it